welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we talk about self-care that goes beyond bubble baths, chocolate, and wine. It is self-care that moves the needle. It is self-care that is fantastic for busy, overwhelmed, underappreciated women. And it is self-care that will give you so much more energy because it is transformational from the inside out. I'm coming to you today from the very luxurious location of my car at sunset here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My daughter is babysitting and I am waiting for her to finish. So this is the real life of a podcaster (laughs) using my time effectively. What I wanted to share with you today, because it came up several times in the Courageous Self-Care community and in the book that I just finished my first draft of, Three Simple Steps to Move Through Fear. Have you ever been afraid in your life? Of course. We all have experienced fear and there are so many different viewpoints and ideas on how to move through it. I wanted to chime into that conversation because courage is integral. In fact, I just finished a book called The Courage to be Disliked, which was fantastic. I highly recommend it. And it pinpointed courage as the most important part of being a human being and moving forward in life in the journey of self-realization and discovery. I was totally on board with that. And I feel like, personally, courage obviously goes so well with self-care because it does take courage to prioritize our own well-being. So what I'm going to share with you today is our... Hmm. Three simple steps to move through that fear in a unique way that I've never heard of before. But, well, I've never read about it. I've taken lots of personal development classes. I haven't heard of this specific strategy. This is what I came up with and what I use in my life. So step number one is get curious. We're going to have three different get steps and I love how they all start with a C. So get curious. Open up your mind. So this is starting to go into the fear, figuring out why you are actually afraid and distilling it. So usually fear is a lot bigger and more intimidating when it's just this vague thing. We don't actually know what we're afraid of. But as Einstein said... And I'm paraphrasing here, you can't solve a problem in the same consciousness that it was created in. So if you're just trying the same thing over and over, or you're doing nothing, which is the same thing over and over, and you have dreams for yourself, or even if you don't have dreams, but life is full of blocks and sameness and routine and survival and struggle, it doesn't have to be that way. But you are going to need to do something different. And right there, that is so scary for so many people. The reptilian part of our brain wants things to be familiar and predictable. That is the part of us that is in fear. And that's okay. We don't have to fight against it, as many gurus and teachers teach. It's kind of getting to be more an old-fashioned approach. A contemporary uh, solution to that is loving that part of you and accepting it And then getting curious about how you can move beyond those limiting thoughts that are holding you back. So I have some questions that I suggest that you ask ask yourself. If you have something, you're tuning into your intuition and you're getting these ideas of something beyond what is uh, available to you right now. You have dreams that are either kind of semi-formed or crystal clear, but you're stuck and you're afraid and you're blocked and you don't know how to get there, here are some questions to help you get curious and shift your energy so that it's more open. Question number one, what am I really afraid of? Hmm, That's a good question. Now, it's helpful to think about the answers to these questions, but it's even more helpful to write them down. So that is what I suggest you do. Get a journal, get a pen, And write down these questions and then journal about them. Question number two, what is the worst thing that could happen? 
This takes that vague, uneasy feeling or fear and transforms it into something very concrete. And usually our imaginations are fantastic at coming up with very scary what ifs. So if you can pinpoint the worst thing that could happen, it's highly unlikely that that's what's going to happen. But at least you have it clear in your mind. So it's not this vague, overwhelming fear. It's clear. And then, of course, if you're going to what if about the most negative thing, you should definitely what if about the most positive thing. So the next question is, what's the best thing that could happen if I move through this fear? And then the last question that I have as a suggestion is, what is it that's holding me back? Do some journaling, do some thinking. What is it that is holding me back? Is it the fear of being uncomfortable? Is it the fear of what other people are going to think about me? A fear about being judged? What is it that is keeping me stuck here? So that is getting curious. That is step number one of moving through fear. Let's move on to step number two. Step number two simple, just like step number one, not easy, but simple, is get connected. It's our second C. Get connected. Here's what you need to know about getting connected. First of all, courage is a very interesting energy because there is always fear involved in courage. It's not a lack of fear. It's not fearlessness. It is fear. There is fear involved. But what's important is that you're using both your heart and your mind. Courage is mindful and it's also driven by your heart and your intuition and your desire for personal discovery to become an amazing, even more scintillating and shining and a fabulous version of who you already are. It's discovering more of who you are. It takes courage to do that. So it's a combination of your mind that is deciding to move towards something and a co- and the other part is your heart that has this vision for yourself or this longing for something to shift or for you to move into a new direction. So here's the thing. Here's I don't have a diagram for you, but I'm going to do it with my hands and hopefully it will translate into my words. Here's you right now at this point of time. And then way over, like if you can imagine I'm stretching out my arm as far as it will go, that's your vision for yourself or there's something there that you want to move towards. And in between those two points, those two dots on the continuum is fear and all those things that you came up with in section one of getting curious. We want to move through that fear. So it's very important to get connected to the dot that is on the end of that continuum. What is it that I am willing to move towards? What is so important to me that I am willing to be uncomfortable and move through fear to get there? And you want to actually write that down. Get very clear on it. This is discovering why. You're getting connected with clarity and vision and this ideal or value. So some examples of those ideals and values are things like love. What are you willing to do for love? Or it might be compassion, or it might be a passion or a pursuit, like um, creativity. I value creativity so much that I am willing to do all sorts of ridiculous things in, that are scary in order to honor this drive I have for creativity. What's another thing that could be on the other side? Well, it could be anything. It could be happiness. It could be health and vitality. It could be... Um, Okay, I don't actually have another idea, but it could be any of those things or your ideas too. So you want to get connected to the ideal on the other side. And the most important reason why you want to do that is because the days of pushing and forcing and thrusting yourself forward into that fear, those are done. We don't need to behave like that anymore, especially as women. What we want instead is to be magnetically drawn towards that value or ideal on the other side. Doesn't that sound better? So allowing yourself to be pulled and to be buoyant through the process and to be um, 
yeah, magnetized to your vision on the other side of that fear. So much easier. And that's why you want to connect with it and identify it. And then you want to ask yourself, why am I willing to get uncomfortable? Because that is the only way to move through fear is to get uncomfortable. It might be physical discomfort. It might be emotional discomfort, probably a bit of both. It will be, uh, well, as many different ways as you can get uncomfortable. It might mean getting up early to honor a new um, desire and habit and practice of moving more. Lots of people find that it's best to fit in their movement or exercise first thing in the morning. It is uncomfortable to get up. I've been doing that lately. I'm taking a 30-day cycling and yoga challenge, and I've been getting up early, and ooh, it is uncomfortable. But I am willing to be uncomfortable because when I get there, it feels amazing. I feel so happy pedaling on my bike, going nowhere, listening to music and being encouraged by the instructor. Oh my gosh, every class I've been to, I think I am so happy to be here. It was totally worth the discomfort. So you want to connect to the vision. And I have a great process for you to do that. I'm not going to share that on this one today. I don't want you to get bogged down in all of these to do's. Uh, I will share it next time. And that's going to be called sensual resonance. So that's getting really clear on what your vision is, what your goal is, what your intention is, that you can, the best that you can envision for yourself, and then allowing yourself to be drawn towards that. And you're going to love sensual resonance. It is such a powerful process. It's so much more in the feminine side. It's kind of a feminine energy goal setting. You're going to love it. So be sure to tune in next time. Okay, so... Those are the ways that you are going to get connected to your vision to help you move courageously through that fear. So that is step two. Let's get into step three. Are you ready for the last C? This one is get creating. I'm not saying get creative. Very different. This is taking action. It is actually doing something. So there's this whole idea of taking embodied action. And the reason we want to take action is obviously we want something to change. We want to move through that courage, or yeah, move with courage through that fear towards our ideal. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to be creative by creating some movement in that direction. Now, embodied action is using your physical body to move forward through that fear. And what I like about this step is that embodied action is the smallest step you can take in the direction of your dream using your physical body. So if you have a dream of, uh, like, for example, this challenge that I'm doing, this fitness challenge, what is the smallest thing that I could do? using my physical body to move towards uh, starting this challenge. The smallest thing I could do was to register for it. It was at the gym that I go to. I saw it on the wall. I felt this intuitive, yes, I do want to do that, even though it sounds hard and uncomfortable. And I don't know if I'll be able to fit it into my schedule for the next 30 days, but I had a yes. And so I acted on it. I took out my phone and... I learned all the information to make sure that it was uh, going to be, I could actually do it. And then I used my fingers, the physical action of signing up. That was the smallest action I could take with my physical body. And the reason it's nice to identify what it is you can do with your physical body, because it gets you out of your mind. Your mind is going, it has that trickster part that is going to make up a thousand and one reasons why you can't do it because it wants to stay safe and predictable. It doesn't want things to change. But when you use your body, you can actually overcome your mind by taking that physical action. So uh, that is step three. Get creating. What is the smallest action I can take that will create momentum forward and help me be drawn magnetically towards that vision. And once you've done that, you determine the next step. So you don't necessarily need this giant plan. 
sometimes I'm a planner and sometimes I go with the flow. I like to go back and forth between those two. So sometimes I'll make a giant plan and map it all out and follow it. And sometimes I'll just feel into it and identify the next step. Both ways are totally fine. For me, anyways, you might be more on one side or the other, but however it works for you, totally fine. The thing you need to know about getting the get creating step is take the smallest step you can using your physical body and then once that's done take the next step and then once that's done take the next step so I think that's pretty clear I want to give you a physical physical well I want to give you an example of how I used this process last few years I've had the knowledge, the intuitive knowledge that I was going to write a courageous self-care book of some sort. And I knew that I needed to gather more information to study courageous self-care, to experience it, to work with clients before I could write the book. So as I was moving into 2019 here, all of a sudden, I had the sense that it is ready. I'm ready to write this book. I've got the 12 foundational skill sets of courageous self-care. I had some other fantastic ideas that I'm going to share with you later on the um, this podcast as we go through the next few months. They're really exciting. I'm happy to share them with you. And uh, there was definitely fear involved in the whole process. So I have written one book before, and that took even more courage. This time's a little bit easier because my comfort zone is bigger. But I did want to get curious. Why is it that I want to write this book? What is the best thing that could happen if I write this book? What is the worst thing that could happen? And this wasn't so much a factor in this book because I'd already done one. But the last time I wrote a book, How Ugly Awkward Dancing Changes Everything, I definitely had the fear of what are people going to think about me? How much is okay to reveal about myself? Some of this is really personal. Are people still going to like me? And so I went through, uh, I didn't have this process at the time, but getting curious, but um I did, uh, yeah, I did think about, well, it, I got connected to why it was really important for me to write the book. And then I was able to move through that fear and temper how much of, um, how much personal stuff to reveal. Cause I'm a pretty private person, even though I'm happy talking to you on this podcast, lots of things I like to keep private. So then, yeah, I got connected to why I wanted to do it. And then I, I have gone step by step. And for the first while, I couldn't actually write the book. I wanted to gather quotes. I wanted to gather ideas. But I started taking that action every day. And I didn't feel like I wanted to do it on a computer. I wanted to write it into, like physically write it out by hand. And so that's what I did. I decided every day I'm going to write for at least 10 minutes. That is a very small action. Even if I've let it go all day and I'm ready for bed... 10 minutes is totally doable. So for almost every single day for the last, I don't know, a few months, I have um, taken that small uh, embodied action of getting my pen, getting out my journal and writing. And initially I didn't have, um, I didn't have the desire to get writing right away. I wanted to collect quotes. I wanted to map out my ideas. So I gave myself permission to do that as I was magnetically being drawn towards this dream of writing a book. I'm so excited to say that I finished the first draft yesterday. Woohoo! So um, you can watch for that. It's going to be a while. I'm moving through another fear. I'm going to see if getting the book actually published by a publisher is feasible. I'm going to work at it. I'm going to do the whole book proposal. I've just learned the process. I was going to self-publish it, but I'm going to do something that is so much further outside of my comfort zone. I'm going to get other people involved, put it out there, face rejection. This feels like something that I'm ready for and that is uncomfortable so I can do it courageously. So that's kind of my process around that. I'm using these three simple steps for it. I hope that this was helpful for you. So to recap, courage is moving through fear, consciously with your mind and with your heart. There are three simple steps that you can use to courageously move through that fear. And in doing those three steps, you are totally practicing self-care 
because the most important thing in life, in my opinion, is the journey of self-discovery and self-realization so that you find out who you really are and become more of yourself and then you can courageously share that person with others. That to me is totally self-care and doing it with energy and gusto and enthusiasm. That just sounds like a fantastic life to me. So yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, give a like on whatever platform you're listening to. Maybe write a review. That would be super. Uh, Leave a comment. Share it with a friend. Share it on a social platform. That would be amazing. I would so appreciate that. And I would love to offer you a resource, the Daily Self-Care Checklist. So in the link or the description for this podcast, you can find the link. It will take you to a page where you enter your name and email, and I will get that checklist to you. It is not just a checklist, although I did spend time on making it very beautiful and appealing. And there is, um, you can print it out. It's more of a teaching. So this is another embodied action you can take to start practicing courageous self-care if that is something that is calling to you. If you want more energy and joy and happiness and satisfaction and contentment and fulfillment in your life, I encourage you to pick up that checklist, print it off, read it, and start practicing. In the meantime, I am, uh, I didn't mean to say that. (laughs) What I want to say is thank you so much for listening. I love connecting with you in this way. I, it started raining here in my car. I think it's our first rain of the spring. Very exciting. And I'm going to go get my daughter now. So thank you for listening. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>